Hello, and welcome to Thin for Life, your go-to resource for sensible weight loss advice. No fluff, no gimmicks, no fad diets, just real tools you can use to transform your body. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by best-selling author and speaker, John Gabriel. For those of you who don't know John, he's the author of The Gabriel Method, the revolutionary, diet-free way to totally transform your body. The book is a bestseller here in the U.S., in Australia, New Zealand, and in Spain. It's been translated into 14 languages and has been used by over 350,000 people worldwide to date. You might have seen John on the Today Show or on Channel 3 News. You might have heard him on Coast to Coast AM or the Lisa J. Smith Show. Or you might have heard Talia Ali, daughter of boxing champ Muhammad Ali, talk about John's method on national television. What started as a personal story of transformation, John himself lost 226 pounds without dieting, has now turned into an international movement for non-diet sustained weight loss. So with that impressive introduction out of the way, John, welcome to the show. Nancy, how are you? Thanks very much. Yes. How are you? I'm excellent. Really good. It's good. it's summer here in Western Australia, and it's warm and beautiful, and uh, I'm getting ready to go to the beach in a little while, so I'm feeling good. Ah, that sounds wonderful, and yeah. we're really excited to have you here today. Thanks. Yeah. John, I'm sitting here looking at your picture uh, before and after photos. I have to say that I can hardly recognize you. In the first picture, the before picture, how much did you weigh? I was over 400 pounds. Um, I had uh, very bad sleep apnea. I was borderline type 2 diabetic, metabolic syndrome, and uh, getting through life was, was a real nightmare. But, uh, wow. Yeah. And uh, over, over a two-and-a-half-year period, I lost, uh, as we said, 225 pounds without dieting. You know, I had tried every diet in, 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 that's out there, and every diet I tried always followed the same pattern. You would lose, I'd lose maybe a little bit of weight in the short term, but then I'd have all these cravings and I'd have this big binge and then I'd gain it back. And I did this yo-yo thing for years until yeah. I had uh, actually gained an enormous amount of weight. So, but at that time when I was 400 pounds, I decided I was never going to diet again. And I decided instead of dieting, I was going to try to figure out why my body wanted to be fat in the first place mm -hmm. and what I could do to get it to want to be thin. And right. I did, yeah. And it, and in this in this after picture where you have your shirt off, it looks like you have six pack abs practically. So that's quite a difference yeah. from where you were. Yeah, definitely. It was a, it was definitely a total transformation. There's no question about it. And uh, I have to say, I, it was basically it was I applied it as a mind body approach. I I learned that stress, for example. Uh, causes your body to gain weight. So I, so I dealt with some of the stresses in my life. I started adding healthier foods. And over time, I started to lose weight without dieting. But what was interesting in the way that I lost weight, which is the exact opposite of a diet, is that I didn't lose weight quickly in the beginning, but the rate at which I started to lose weight started to accelerate so that maybe I was losing um, like a, a pound a week in the beginning, at the end, I was losing three or four pounds, and that's the exact opposite of a diet. So a diet, yeah. you lose weight real quickly in the beginning, and then you have this plateau, and then you have this big binge, and you gain it back. I didn't have any of those things. I didn't have the plateau. I didn't have the binge. I didn't have the rebound. I lost yeah. weight in, in the exact opposite way. And, and the reason that it happened that way, what I discovered is when you get your body to want to be thin, mm -hmm. what happens is you actually start losing weight quicker and quicker because your body knows how to burn fat when it wants to. But when it doesn't want to, it puts the brakes on, and it's literally like driving with the emergency brake on. So you go on a diet and you force yourself to lose weight, but all this chemistry takes place so that you're hungrier and your metabolism slows down, and you become very efficient at storing fat, and you actually lose the ability to burn fat. And a lot of people yeah. don't know this, Nancy, that you know people just look at it as calories in, calories out. Nobody even asks the question, do I even have the ability to burn fat, and when, when your body wants to have weight, when it wants to hold on to weight, you actually lose the ability to burn fat. Chemically, biologically, yeah. you lose the ability to burn fat. So when you do it the right way, it's like taking the emergency brake off, and you lose weight quicker and quicker. And that's what happened to me, and that was over eight years ago now. And wow. I've been the same weight now for eight years, and I don't diet. I have a very, very healthy diet compared to what I used to have, but it, it's, yeah. the, it's the type of foods that I crave. I always eat what I crave, and I always eat as much as I want. 
I do mm -hmm. crave healthier foods. I have a much more active lifestyle, but there's no force. There's no restriction. There's no program. It's all very organic because I've addressed the root causes that w made my body want to hold it to weight, and now my body wants to be thin. And so you did all of this without extreme exercise and without medications or surgery, which is, is amazing. Yeah. So tell us. What is the Gabriel method, and how on earth can you lose weight without without dying? You've explained a little bit about yeah. it, but let's let's get into this more. The Gabriel method is a, is a way of losing weight by getting your body to want to be thin. Every single diet program that's out there all functions on a basic paradigm that you can force yourself to lose weight and keep it off in, on a sustainable basis. And I found from my own experience that that's not the case. Basically, our body has a set point or an ideal weight that it wants to be, and it will fight to be that weight. So if your body wants to be 300 pounds, for example, and you force yourself down to 280, all this chemistry takes place in your body so that you're hungrier and your metabolism slows and you, crave, and, and you, and you just can't stop eating until you get back to that 300 mark. So your body will yeah. fight to defend its set point. So what I did is I studied every conceivable aspect of this set point and my approach, the Gabriel method, is a way of actually shifting your set point. So that rather than force yourself down to 280, you get your body to actually no longer want to be 300, but want to be 280, and then no, lo not, no longer want to be 280, but 200 and 180. In other words, you're shifting your body's set point and getting your body to want to be thin. Then it all happens organically and naturally. So it's a way of working with your body. With your body, right. Instead of fighting it. Yeah. And I have to be honest with you, for, for myself and probably for most people listening, it's really hard to believe because every book and magazine and everyone talks about the, you know, the, the calories in and calories out, the eating less, the exercising more. And how can that be so wrong if that's what we've been taught? Well, you've know? you, you got to ask yourself if it was right, why is there a different diet coming out every single week, all functioning mm -hmm. on this same idea that you can somehow force yourself to lose weight? First, it's, low, yeah. first it's no fat then it's no carb, then it's no salt, sugar, wheat, gluten. Every, every diet, and then it's just eating grapefruits, whatever it is, every diet has, it has this premise that you can force yourself to lose weight. And if diets worked, Nancy, you have to realize that there, there would be really maybe one diet, maybe two. Yeah. Everybody would lose weight, and that would be the end of it. People wouldn't be talking about it anymore. The reason right. why everyone's <laughs> talking about it is yeah, because they no can't figure <laughs> they, right, and they can't figure it out. Yeah. And the reason they can't right. figure it out is because you're forcing yourself to lose weight. To lose weight, and it doesn't work. And uh, the reason why forcing yourself to lose weight does not work is that our body has a built-in survival protection mechanism that forces you to gain weight whenever it feels like your body is thinner than it wants to be. So mm -hmm. if you go on a diet, you force yourself to lose weight, and it's almost like maybe a 1,000 years ago, if there was a famine, your body would then say, okay, there's a famine, we're losing too much weight, this is a survival threat, let's, mm -hmm. let's get hungry all the time. So you're, yeah. so, you're, so, you're, so you're forcing your body to activate this famine response and be hungry all the time, and there is no famine. There's unlimited yeah. food. So if your body's being forced to activate this famine response, which is what I call the fat programs, and you're in a land of all you can eat, empty calorie, dead carbohydrate foods, you will gain weight. And if you force yourself to, to, to lose weight through dieting, it just makes that famine response go even stronger. And everybody knows this. Anybody that's ever tried to, to lose weight by dieting knows that you can lose a little bit of weight and then you're just hungry all the time until you yeah. finally have this big binge and, and you gain it back. And I've talked to thousands and thousands of people over the last seven years, and they all have the same experience of this yo-yo roller coaster. They've tried this diet, that diet, stomach stapling, and that's really, to me, that's the most disheartening is when you actually get surgery to staple yeah. your stomach, and maybe you've lost a little bit of weight, and then your metabolism gets shut down to zero so that you're eating nothing, craving foods all the time, and you're not losing any more weight, and it's so yeah. disheartening, and it's, it's almost like you've painted yourself into a corner. Because mm -hmm. now you've got to fight, struggle for resisting cravings and eat next to nothing just to maintain the weight that you're at. And then what happens is you can't take it anymore. You have this huge binge, and your body is so ready at that point because your metabolism is so slow and you become so efficient at storing fat. Your body is so ready to suck up every extra calorie that you eat, and boom, 
goes right into your fat cells. It's a vicious yeah. roller coaster. And I lived through it for 11 years where I'd lose wow. five pounds, gain 10 pounds, lose five pounds, gain 10 pounds, till I gained over 200 pounds. And when I tell you yeah. that, I, that I tried everything, you know, I, I worked face-to-face uh, -face with the late Dr. Atkins. I was in, I was in New York at the time, and he was, mm -hmm. he, he was there. And we used to meet every Monday morning, and he would, ch he would check my, my meds and my blood. And, and I just remember that after, uh, after a month, I'm sitting in his office, he's looking at my test scores, and he just looks up at me and he goes, what are you doing? You're killing yeah. yourself. Yeah. And I think to myself, is that really the best you can do? I mean, you're Dr. Atkins, and you've sold 200 right. million copies of your book, and the best you can do is right. yell at me for being so fat? Yeah, like, I don't have right. enough willpower and discipline. Like, I, I don't have enough motivation to lose weight. I, was, yeah. I had fitness trainers. I went to the Pritikin Institute. I had acupuncture, holi yeah. all kinds of holistic treatments. I wanted to lose the weight, but no matter what I did, my body was forcing me to, to yeah. gain the weight. So it, it really makes me curious in terms of the next question is how did you develop the principles of the of the Gabriel method then yeah. because it I mean it sounds like you went through so many other things and then all of a sudden you you reached this place where you figured out how to do it right well here, here's the thing with me I've been on both sides of the tracks so mm -hmm. in my 20s I was the same weight as I am now, 183, 184 pounds I was, I was effortlessly yeah. thin I was I was a triathlete a ski racer I yeah. loved you know I loved being active I was fit. I never, ever, ever had to worry about weight. And even when I stopped exercising, I, I, for, for, in my 20s, for five or six years, I wasn't doing any exercise. I never had to think about weight. I was effortlessly thin. All of a sudden, I moved to New York. I start working in this way high stress job. I'm gaining mm -hmm. weight. I'm gaining five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And then so I, I decide that, well, I'll do, uh, I'll do what everybody does to lose weight. I'll go on a diet. I'm going on a diet. I'm still, I'm still gaining weight. Here now, all of a sudden, I'm at war with my body. And no matter what I do, my body's gaining and gaining and gaining. And like I said, till I gained over 200 pounds and I weighed over 400 pounds. And when that happened, I said, hang on a second. What's going on here? Because this isn't about, hey, John's all of a sudden weak and lazy. You know, we have this stereotype mm -hmm. that fat people are just weak and lazy and overindulgent. Right. They should just eat less. I lived through this. And I was like, what's going on here? All this, there's, there was a time when no matter what I did, I was effortlessly thin. And now no matter what I do, I'm gaining weight. Something mm -hmm. else is at play here. I've got to figure out what that something else is. What's at play here? And I had a very solid biochemistry background from the University of Pennsylvania. That gave me a foundation, enough of a foundation, to go on the internet and do tremendous research and really understand the latest cutting edge research on what, what causes people to gain and lose weight. I also knew stress had something to do with it because it wasn't until I moved to New York, started working in this high stress job that I started gaining weight. So I, I studied the chemistry of stress really, really in detail, the actual biochemical things that take place in your cells, in your bloodstream, when you have stress. And I started to make a connection that there's a relationship between all types of different stresses, whether they're physical or emotional, and this thing that I call the fat programs or the fat switch, which is like this famine protection switch. Now, mm -hmm. here's the thing. Now, if you were in a famine, Certain chemistry would take place. Your cortisol levels would go up. You'd develop something called insulin resistance. Your um, pro-inflammatory cytokines, a, a different types of hormones would go on. So you have this kind of cascade of, of different hormones that, that get switched on and off in your body. And that, the, it's those switching of the hormones, that changing of your blood chemistry, that's a signal to your brain that you're in a famine. Now, you may not be in a famine. All you need is that chemistry to take place. For example, if you give, if you give somebody cortisol medication, they're going to gain 20, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds. As long as you give them cortisol medication, they're going to gain weight. It's because the chemistry in your blood is activating the fat programs. When you're in chronic stress, mental and emotional stress, your cortisol levels levels elevate just like if you were in a famine and it's a signal to your body to gain weight. If you're in a nutritional famine, if you've got sleep apnea, if you're dehydrated, there's so many, if, if you have an excess of toxins, there's so many different things that can happen that will change your blood chemistry and activate the switch. So I, I studied this switch really carefully and I studied all the different components that can 
activate this switch, and I devised an approach that addresses changing your blood chemistry, changing the signals in your brain, turning off that switch. And when that happens, it is so automatic. And now I'm on the other side of the tracks again. I'm that effortlessly yeah. thin person now, eight years down the road, because, my, because I've learned how to manipulate my blood chemistry and turn off that switch. And that's what the Gabriel method is. And most people listening have, have at least some stress, maybe a ton of stress in their lives. And I, so I think this is a really important thing for them to take away that, that you've, you've explained to us how being stressed can make you fat. Here's the thing, Nancy, is that everybody's so focused on, on food. But mm -hmm. uh, take, let's, take, let's take something simple like insulin resistance, which is a precursor to type 2 diabetes. And most people have this when they gain weight. So all of the, li all of the low carb diets and, uh, and you know, the metabolic typing diets, and, and all, all of these diets, the zone diets, they all are trying to reverse or regulate your insulin levels and regulate mm -hmm. this thing called insulin resistance. And when you have insulin resistance, you gain weight. So it's trying to regulate that through food. But 80% of insulin resistance is caused by emotional stress. And the reason is because cortisol, which is activated when, you're, when you have stress, is an anti-insulin hormone. That means that cortisol will cause your body to stop listening to insulin. Cortisol causes insulin resistance. Now, if you're not addressing the mental and emotional stress in your life, you can take all the juices and all the low-carb, non-fat, right. diet-free, blah, blah, blah stuff in the world, and you're yeah. not getting the root cause. And that's why you go to war with your body. So you've got to right. look at the whole picture. Now, it's not mental and emotional stress for everyone. It's mental and emotional stress will contribute most of the time, but it could mm -hmm. be it, it could be that you're nutritionally uh, deficient. You're not getting the right nutrients. Mm -hmm. It could be your digestion is not working properly. It could be you're taking too much diet soda, and the diets and the sweetener in the diet soda is activating your fat programs. And that's a beautiful mm -hmm. example of calories in, calories out. Here you've got a, a sweet a soda that's got zero calories, but it's got a chemical in it that's flipping your fat switch. So you get zero calories right. there, but you can't stop eating other things. So there's all these different things that can happen that, that will cause you. And, I, and having talked to thousands of people now, I, I've, I've put together a, a systemized, a all points bulletin approach that approaches all the different things that could conceivably be flipping your fat switch. And I say, don't focus on the calories. Don't focus on the diet. Focus on the switch. What's mm -hmm. activating the switch? Whether and and I give I give people step by step approach to turning off that switch, and it works. It really really works. I just got an email from a lady last week. She halved her body weight. She went from wow. she she went from two eighty down to one forty. Halved her body weight. Another guy lost just as much weight as me. He lost he lost two hundred and twenty pounds. And and these are people that have tried to lose weight through dieting and failed time and time again, and they can't yeah. believe it. But it's to me it's a little bit like you're trying to get through a glass window, you know? Yeah. So, so let's say you've got a glass door that's open, but, the, but, but it's half open and the other half is glass. And you keep trying to walk through the glass door, and you can try to walk through the glass door a million times, and you're just going to keep way. banging your head against the wall. If you turn to the right. left and walk through the door, it's effortless. And that's what my approach is. It's turn to the left, walk through the door. Address the root causes, get your body to want to be thin. That's it in a nutshell. And in essence, when you do that, it's effortless. And you're giving you're giving hope to lots of people who've struggled, and and that's a really wonderful thing too. What's also good about my approach is a, the same chemistry that causes you to activate the fat programs also causes type two diabetes, cancer, heart disease, Crohn's disease, chronic fatigue syndrome. All of these stress all of these things are stress related illnesses and 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 caused by digestion problems. And, and when you're addressing your digestion, when you're addressing stress, when you're learning how to nourish your body, when you're learning how to nourish your mind. In your heart, all of these things have an enormous positive effect in many, many other areas of your life. So not only are you going to yeah, lose weight, you're going to have, yeah, you're going to have tremendous energy. Now you, you hear about people that lose weight through stomach stapling; they're exhausted all the time. Okay, so they yeah, got this little right. they've got this teeny stomach now, and they go to McDonald's and they have a milkshake for for lunch because that's all they can fit in their stomach. They're right. not losing any more weight. They're exhausted and it's still all the starving. time. Starving, yeah. They're, st yeah. <laughs> they're starving yeah. on a nutritional level. They're exhausted all the time. They're tired. Their skin's f sagging, and, and, it's, and it's a nightmare. This is the exact opposite. Over time, you get more and more and more energy. I, it used to be for me, life was just like a, a, a nightmare to try to get through. I felt like I was on a treadmill that was going too fast with no way to get off, yeah. and I was exhausted all the time. Now I just yeah. have endless energy. I mean, really, really endless energy. And it's just because my system's functioning right. And that's all it is. It's, it's getting your system functioning right at every level, body, mind, and, and soul.
And so t- tell us a little bit more about your unique approach to exercise that I read about in your book, uh, Get Thin or Get Eaten, right. The Adaptation. Right. What, what's that about, and how do we use it? Okay, so, so, so basically with exercise, I approach exercise the same way I approach every aspect of the Gabriel Method, is as what aspect of the exercise will get your body to want to be thin, not just burn calories. See, most mm-hmm. people look at exercise as a fat-burning tool, and I remember that when I, I used to go to the gym when I was overweight and before I figured everything out, I, I'd sit on the... I'd sit on the, tr- the uh, recumbent stationary bike or whatever it is and, and watch TV for an hour. And, and it'd say I'd burn like 400 calories. And mm-hmm. I think to myself, 400 calories, that's like a bagel, you know? Yeah. For all that work, <laughs> right. why not just not eat the bagel? And if you're looking at it yeah. as calories in, calories out, it's true. Exercise is not burning that many calories. It's not saving you that much. And if it's just making you that much hungrier, it's not doing anything for you. But if you use exercise as a tool for getting your body to want to be thin, Mm-hmm. then you're flipping that f- the, the fat switch, you're turning the fat switch off. And the way you do that is you have to look at the way our bodies are, are hardwired. So just as a 1,000 years ago, our bodies are designed to protect us against famine by activating this fat switch and causing us to gain weight, we have another switch that I call the get thin or get eaten switch or mm-hmm. that, that, that flips your body into get thin mode, and that's to protect you against predators. So maybe a 1,000 years ago, let's say that you – we're living, instead of living in like a place where there's a famine, like a cold climate, let's say you were living in, an, in, in a beautiful tropical island where mm-hmm. there was all the food you could have. There was fresh fruit, salad, game, fish, chicken, and you could eat whatever you want, which, and it's very natural. So there's no, there's no famine. There's no reason why your body needs to hold on to weight. And it's warm out. The, you don't need fat to protect you from the warmth. But let's, let's imagine that there were predators, you know, tigers mm-hmm. that ran. Now, if a tiger chases you, you, you run for 30 seconds and you either live or you die. It's just right. that simple. That's a stress too. Just like famine is a stress that causes chemistry in your body, running for 30 seconds away from a tiger in a life or death moment is a, is a stress that causes chemistry in your body too, but it causes different chemistry in your body. That mm-hmm. chemistry turns off your fat switch. That chemistry says to your body, hold the brakes. We don't need to be fat. Nothing is more important than getting as thin as possible yeah. for survival reasons. And then when you've flipped the switch, you lose weight. So my approach is rather than do the 40-minute cardio seven days a week, a couple of days a week, go, if, if you're walking, for example, let's take walking, but it could be anything. But if you're walking, a couple of days a week, you go for a nice, easy stroll for 10, 20 minutes. But at some point during the exercise, for just 10 seconds, move as fast as you can, lightning mm-hmm. fast. Get your doctor's approval for it, but move as fast as you can. And imagine you're being chased by a predator and that you outrun this predator and that you're fit and thin and able to escape this type of thing. And it communicates to your body that you need to, to be thin in order to be safe. It mm-hmm. activates this primal get thinner, get eaten response, and then the, flip, the switch gets flipped. Now, you're not going to burn many calories sprinting for 10, 10 seconds. You're flipping the switch, though, which means that your metabolism is going to speed up. You're, you're going to be very efficient at burning fat, and you're not going to be as hungry. So that's how I use exercise, not as a calories in, ca- calories out type of, type of thing. Right. Yeah. And, you know, every month someone comes out with some new thing, you know, do this, do that. And we've heard it again and again. Yeah. So to play devil's advocate, using your method, can anyone get their body to want to be thin? Absolutely. Is it for everyone? It is for everyone, and absolutely anyone can do it. The key is in the application. So the principles apply to everyone. The principles are you change your body's chemistry so that you're turning off the fat switch and you're turning on the thin switch. That applies to everybody. You can, if you change your body chemistry, you will lose weight. It's, it's, not, it's not a question of genetics. People talk about genetics. What we're learning more and more is that genetics is just uh, your, your DNA is just a storehouse for spare parts. It doesn't re- it's not the command center of your body. And your, 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 your spare parts will get turned on or turned off depending on the chemical environment of your blood. So if you change the chemical environment, the chemical signals in your blood, you will activate the spare parts or the, in your DNA that cause you to lose weight and turn off the ones that cause you to gain weight. It applies to everyone. It's just the application. Now, some people say to me, you know, I tried your method and it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I say, okay, so what is trying my method? Well, I take flax yeah. seeds every morning. I take probiotics. Okay, so right. you can take flax seeds and you can take probiotics. That's great. You're getting good omega-3s. And you're learning how to nourish your body. Tell me a little bit more about your life when you started gaining weight, blah, blah, blah. Well, when I was a teenager, um, I, had, I had an abusive partner, and he was an alcoholic. 
And ever since he beat me, I, I've started putting on weight. Mm, okay. Right. Well, according trauma. to the Gabriel method, yeah. you've got to address the real issue. So the real issue for her is a trauma. Now, mm -hmm. taking flaxseeds isn't going to take care of a trauma. Taking probiotics isn't going to take no. care of a trauma. Taking care of the trauma is going to take care of the trauma. So it's right. easy to get stuck on the diet aspect or the, or, the, or the nutritional aspects of the Gabriel Method. And usually people do that when they've got traumas and they don't want to face the trauma. So, so dealing, you've got to deal with the real issue in order to make the Gabriel Method work. And when you deal with the real issue and it's, not, and it, and it, it's different for each person, then you lose weight. Another person that I was talking to, he called me over the phone. I could tell by his breathing that he had very bad sleep apnea because he was breathing, his mm -hmm. breathing was extremely labored. I had very bad sleep apnea once, and, I, and my breathing was like that. So as he's talking to me, he's telling me about his fitness trainers and what he eats, what he doesn't eat, and I just stop him. I say, look, I don't want to talk about what you eat. I don't want to talk about what you don't eat. I can tell you've got sleep apnea. Now, sleep apnea will activate, elevate your cortisol levels, which is the same thing that happens as a famine. It'll trick your body into activating the fat switch. So your body's getting tricked into activating your fat switch. You, t you take care of your, your sleep apnea, which is an easy thing to do. You take care of your sleep apnea, and we'll talk. So yeah. I didn't hear from him again for four months. He called me back. He said he got his C CPAP machine. He took care of his sleep apnea. He lost 88 pounds in over the four-month period doing nothing else. Now, wow. that just wow. happened to be his issue. Somebody else it may or may not be his, their issue, but that was his issue. So you address the, the, the real issue. You apply the principles they gave him nothing correctly. You address the real issue, and it works. Now, what we're finding now is more and more people need support for getting to the root cause. And so we have more support type of things. Like we've got step-by-step uh, -step classes and membership programs where every week I talk to people and, and there's, there's forums and we give them more, more and more information so that they can figure out exactly what's activating their fat switch and turn off. And man, when it works, to me there's like there's nothing else in the world better than getting that email that somebody has just lost all of the weight that they've been trying to lose. They've got incredible energy. It's simple. It's not an effort anymore. And it just, it's an amazing feeling. It really is. And it's, it's really interesting, too, that as, as a you know, person interested in psychology, that it's sort of like a protection from whatever abuse or trauma that yeah. they, you know, that they're heavy. And so if they address that, it goes away. And it's really amazing that, you know, you put that all together in a comprehensive thing. And so it sounds like, People who are saying they're from big families and they're genetically predisposed. That's really doesn't it doesn't uh, come into the equation here because your method can help them as well. Well, well, if you if you look at my if you look at my before pictures when I was over 400 pounds, and you look at some of the members of my family and my uncles and grandfathers, you know, you would say, okay, this is a this person comes from a genetically fat person, genetically fat. If you followed me over the last eight years, you'd say this is a genetically thin person. Right, right. Okay, so so really, so, it's, so it's not really. so yeah, so it's not it's not genetics. And, and as far as the protection thing, it's 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 really it, it's it's really kind of interesting because you know we get really mad at our bodies. People think we we think uh, our bodies are sabotaging us or we're we're sabotaging mm -hmm. ourselves, and that's not it at all. It's just that when your body has made the association that that fat is somehow a protection for you, it's going to mm -hmm, defend that. Mm -hmm. It's actually your body's actually trying to protect you. Yeah. Not sabotage you. So when you're able to, f to get your body to no longer think that fat is a form of protection, honestly, it is the easiest thing in the world to lose weight. Your body wants to lose weight. Your body knows how to lose weight. Nothing is easier when you get your body to want to be thin. So it's almost like a, a permission to give your to let your body do what it knows how to do on its own, really. It, yeah, yeah, and, and a lot of it is education. You know, yeah. it's, it's educating yourself on how your body really works so that you and your body can work together. Right. And, and on your website, I saw hundreds of testimonials, um, many of them on video, and at least three different people were saying they'd reverse their type 2 diabetes using your method. Mm -hmm. Is this yeah. true? Yeah, yeah, it is. And, you know, even the first person that ever read my book, this lady, Amanda Pierce, she was 69 years old. I was on uh, a television show here in Australia. It was one, I think it was, it was uh, A Current Affair, the first time I was on A Current Affair. And this was two years before I wrote the book. I just lost the weight, and it was a big phenomenon here. And uh, she called me because I really want to read your book. I said, oh, I don't have it yet. She called me every six months for two years. This lady never <laughs> Making forgot sure me. you were getting it done, right? <laughs> yeah. Finally, right. in February of 07, I had a draft of the book that I could send her. And so she was, so she was the first person to read it before, it before it was published, before anything. She called me six months later. She said that she, she's 69 years old. She lost 53 kilos or 113 wow. pounds and she totally reversed her type 2 diabetes. She used to have 
a blood sugar level in, in the 19s, which is like nerve damage, and now it's mm. a very manageable five or six, or doctors can't believe it. Wow. And then since then, and I know I was borderline type 2 diabetic once now, and once, and that's not an issue anymore for me either. And since then, I've had h hundreds of people really tell me that they've had the same thing, and it makes perfect sense to me mm -hmm. because type 2 diabetes is really a very bad case of something called insulin resistance, and insulin resistance happens when your fat programs are on. You turn your fat programs off, the insulin resistance goes away, the type 2 diabetes goes away. I was able to demonstrate this to the American Holistic Medical Association, and the chairman of the conference said that it, my talk was really the highlight of the conference because I was able to prove that type 2 diabetes is caused by your body activating your fat programs. You turn your fat programs off, automatically the type 2 diabetes gets reversed, and that's what's been happening. Wow. You once wrote that of everything you teach, visualization practices are probably the most powerful and profound. I don't think most people even know what you mean by that. What is visualization for weight loss, and, and how does it work? Visualization is extremely effective for weight loss. I mean, the, the body that I have now is the exact body that I visualize having. And when I weighed over 400 pounds, I visualized a, a, a thin body with six-pack six abs. Mm -hmm. And anybody that saw me visualize that when I was... At, at, had a 60-inch waist would say I was crazy, but mm -hmm. it's exactly the, the body that I ended up with, and I don't think it's a, it's a coincidence. And visualization is enormously effective in other things. Our, you know, bodybuilders like Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was do, winning all his body, he, he used visualization. Olympic athletes use visualization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and visualization is very effective in communicating with your body. And they've even done studies where when you visualize your ideal sport, when an Olympic athlete, for example, is visualizing their ideal sport, all the neurons and, and muscles and tendons get fired in the exact same coordinated sequence as if they were actually doing the sport. So your body doesn't know the difference between real and an imagined or a real and a visualized experience. And so because of that, visualization is a great way to communicate with your body. And so, for example, when when you make a visual image of how you would like to look, it's it's almost to me a little bit like communicating to your body that you don't need to be fat. You, and you have to understand when your body's using fat as a protection, and it could be a protection from mental and emotional stress, from trauma, from all these different things, your body's really confused. I mean, all it knows is it's getting all these chemical signals. It doesn't know if it's a famine, if it's a predator, if it should get fat, if it should get thin. We're living in a world today that's so different from the world that we, we evolved in thousands of years ago mm -hmm. that our bodies are just plain confused into activating this fat program. So when you make a visual image of how you would like to look, it's almost like you're communicating to your body that you don't need the weight. Mm -hmm. And and visualization or symbols is really the universal language of how you can communicate with someone. So if you've got, let's say you're in a foreign country and no one speaks your language and you have to go to the bathroom, you can talk to a thousand people, say, where's the bathroom? Not one of them will say, you know, not one of them will tell you. But if you right. make a, draw, just draw a picture of a bathroom and show it to anyone, instantly they know what you're saying and they know how to point you in the right direction. So visualization is the, or symbols are the universal language when, when people don't speak your language. And your brain, at least that part of your brain, what, what, what uh, experts call the animal brain, doesn't understand. You can't talk to the animal brain. So you have to find another way to communicate with it. And if you communicate in symbols where you imagine yourself getting thinner and thinner and thinner, it's like a code that speaks to your brain. And by the way, this part of your brain is in total control of your set point. So mm -hmm. if it wants to be 300 pounds and it wants to then be 150 pounds, it can do that. Mm -hmm. It can shift your set point, but you have to find a way to communicate with your subconscious, with your animal brain. Visualization seems to do that, and it's just enormously effective that way. It's also really, really good for just reducing stress. So mm -hmm. many studies have shown that both meditation and visualization inhibit the signals to, per to cer certain parts of your brain. For example, the amygdala, that's the seat of aggression and fear. So what happens is you, you actually don't, the signals that cause you to have fear and stress go away, which means that the chemistry that, that's caused by the stress, like the cortisol levels, go down, and that also changes your blood chemistry so that the fat programs go, get turned off. Wow. So there's lots of different ways, reasons why visualization works. And, and for looking at it as a mind-body approach, which you have to do, because any, any thought you have is going to change chemistry in your body, so you have to do, take a mind-body approach. And, and in taking a mind-body approach, visualization is by far one of the most effective tools. Wow. And, and this is really, it's really amazing and interesting um, to hear this um, about visualization. And my, my head's still spinning a little from all of these new ideas I'm taking in, and I, I know our listeners are probably feeling the same way, too. 
So for someone who is excited about what you've been talking about, this non-diet approach to sustain weight loss, where can they start to do this? Well, if you, if you go to thegabrielmethod.com, we have a lot of free resources. I've got lectures, talks, free visualizations. Uh, you can read the first chapter of the book. Um, there's a free, you can join our, our membership group, group for free, get a free trial or a membership group. There's so many different resources that we have on our site at The Gabriel Method to help you get started. And you can just post a question, how do I get started, and so many people will, will help you. So that's the first place I would go is, is, is just go to the site and look around and familiarize yourself and, and, and get some, some information. The other thing I would do is be conscious of the types of things that activate your fat program. So, you, so rather than dieting, you need to nourish your body because if you're not getting the right nourishment, mm -hmm. then your, your fat programs get activated. So you need to start learning about nourishment. You have to imp improve your digestion because your digestion, uh, it, most of us have very impaired digestion. So you need to learn, you need to educate about how to n nourish yourself, how to, how, to get, um, how, to, how to improve your digestion, and most importantly, how to deal with mental and emotional stress. Yeah. And we've got lots of tools for that. But, but, but just simply taking this, what I would call a paradigm shift of rather than force looking in and changing the signals that cause your fat programs to activate, simply by looking in that direction, you will inevitably be on the right path. And I, I did look on the website, and it looks like it's affordable. There's no meal plans, no complicated food charts or yeah. you know, hardcore exercise. It sounds like it makes a lot of sense and, and that it's something that anyone can do. Yeah, no, we, we, we definitely make it as accessible as possible for as many people as possible. So there's a ton of information there. We also have a very comprehensive introductory package I call the Total Transformation Package, which has the book. It also has a video book, which is me reading the book with all kinds of illustrations as you're watching, which is a really effective tool for learning because you're using different areas of your, of your brain to learn. Some people are visual, some people are auditory. Mm -hmm. You're using both of those, so it's a great way to learn. You just watch the videos, there's 12 videos, you watch each video, and you're able to assimilate the Gabriel Method principles. This total transformation package also comes with a host of other visualizations, talks, and lectures that are very informative. And that's, and that's a, a very affordable way to get a tremendous amount of information. So that's a good one also right. to start with. No, that sounds wonderful. For everyone listening, to learn more about the Total Transformation Package John's referring to, please see the links in the show notes on this webpage. And thanks so much for listening today. I'm Nancy, and this has been Thin for Life with special guest John Gabriel. We're wishing you a happy and healthy rest of your day. Goodbye for now.